Yo, what's up, guys? Today we are, well, not reacting, but we're going to talk about Money Heist. There are going to be some spoilers, so if you don't want spoilers and you haven't seen Money Heist Season 5 yet, La Casa de Papel, um, then don't watch this if you don't want any spoilers, because I'm going to show you spoilers here. Um, I'm just going to talk about this because I have just watched it. I watched all five episodes back to back, and... I just want to give you my quick review. I'm not going to enter into detail, but I'm just going to talk to you about it. Okay? Ready? I'll give you five seconds to turn off and come back after you watch it. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay. I will not be held responsible <laughs> for any spoilers that I might give. Before we start the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. So, um, as I have told you before, La Casa di Papel is one of my favorite series um, at the moment. And season four was kind of like, I don't know. It started with, um, and it's, it, the whole season, kind of like nothing happened. That's how I felt on se in season four. Because season three had ended with um, Nairobi. Is she going to die? Is she going to live? Um, Lisboa, Lisbon, you know, she was also in a pickle. And that's how season four ended with, you know, the death of Nairobi and also Lisboa in a pickle. And it, it kind of like was kind of like the same thing. Nothing progressed. Um, for season five, there was progression. Um, but I think in season five, there were... A lot of parallel stories okay so we're gonna start with um, the very beginning um, here's what happened in the very beginning we saw Berlin with a parallel story actually the very beginning actually was um, a recap of um, the professor El Professor um, being held hostage but let's talk about Berlin for, for the first um, part of this video. We, ha we got to see Berlin again. And this time we saw a parallel story, which for now has nothing to do with season five. Maybe it does in a you know, small um, extent, very small, but it, it, I think they just included that storyline so that we can see Berlin again and that, you know, and because he was a very loved character, even though he was arrogant and full of craziness in the first season, he he redeemed himself. Um, so we see him try to fix his relationship with his son. And in the first moment, we already see that he brought his girlfriend along. And he revealed to his son that he paid the university for a purpose and, you know, all of that. So we can see that Berlin wasn't genuinely interested in, in getting back with his son, but rather using him for, um, you know, for the dark force. And it goes on to talk about his parallel story, him and his son and his girlfriend and his crew and how they how they managed to steal i think 12 million euros and he taught his son a lesson and his son got you know the taste of stealing stuff and there was a point where he where berlin said to his son if you if you want something you got to take it from someone who has it and he looks back to berlin's wife and you know that indicates that the son really wants to get his woman um so berlin had a side story and, you know, we didn't see any contribution to the actual plan that was going on. Um, so that was Berlin. Interesting, but he wasn't involved in action. We also saw him interacting with El Profesor and how they found out about Tokyo and all of that. Okay, now let's go to the Profesor, the Professor, El Profesor. So here we have El Profesor. Um, for the first half of the, the season, we see that he kind of lost his, 
you know, all of his power was undermined when he was held hostage. He was, um, you know, for, like in the beginning, we saw him as this untouchable character, this character that was strong, intelligent. He premeditated a lot of things and, you know, he was the genius. And then in season five, we kind of see him lose that control and lose that power. He had been losing it throughout the season. Season four, he lost a lot of it. And, you know, many things happened. Um, even in season two, he he left, he, you know, he left his guard down. He fell in love with um, Lisbon, Lisboa. And, you know, a lot of things happened that made him a vulnerable character. Um, and, and season five, first part, he was also very vulnerable. Um, he got shot on the foot. He got hung. And there was a scene that he tried to, you know, do one of his um, kung fu kind of things, you know, to steal the gun from a pregnant lady. And even then, he was not successful. He got knocked out by a pregnant woman, which, um, no offense to pregnant ladies, but, you know, we've seen him take guns away from trained soldiers before and seen him fight and you know he he's this cool character but he spent most of his time being tortured being undermined being um you know just locked up as a as a, a dog um but then eventually he managed to use his knowledge to get control back of the situation but only based on luck luck literally if 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 the inspector did not have that baby at that time um then the professor would not have the leverage and you know he would not be able to take back control so basically his character was undermined and i thought they could have used his intelligence more um effectively but he was kind of like, you know, his his um, brightness was faded in season five. It was it started in season four, um, but, you know, many mistakes were made. And yeah, but when he did take back control, um, he didn't act fast enough. He didn't come up with any intelligent plan. Rather, the the solutions came from the the members themselves um which takes me to the next person which was rio let's talk about rio what happened with rio was um he kind of like grew a set of cojones um <laughs> in this one but he wasn't um on screen that long he didn't have a lot of runtime um and when he did have this genius idea which um came to him after he heard an explosion you know he at the the last episode he tried to drill a hole to save um tokyo and he didn't even care about denver and the other girl um he was just thinking about tokyo um and he didn't ask for anybody's help um but it was too late so he had not much um, going on for him in this season, but he did have an interaction with Denver because um, Denver reminded him that he didn't kill the um, the captain. What is his name? Kaleha, Kaleha, something like that. I can't remember right now. I'll take a look. Um, no, no, wait. His name is Gandia. Sorry, Gandia. Kale something with someone else. Um, so Gandia, which is this guy, if you guys are, if you guys don't know. So Rio had the opportunity to shoot him in the, in season four, I think, um, right before he killed Nairobi and, um, he didn't. Rio was also in season four, uh, well, actually season three, he was the one that pff, messed everything up. Because he he wanted to call um, 
call Tokyo. I mean, come on, he messed everything up, and that's why season three happened because of Rio. Um, so we we could see that he he isn't a strong character. He he isn't a person to take decisions. He he's just helplessly in love with Tokyo, and you know he's basically what we call a simp. But yeah, it, I mean his participation in season five wasn't a lot. So okay, and then we have Denver here. So Denver is one of the coolest um, of the gang, and. His participation was big. There were a lot of things going on for him. But then they introduced a, a new love interest, something that wasn't really premeditated. And his relationship with um, Stockholm was kind of, you know, shook. Um, and also Stockholm was going against his um, ideas she was trying to protect her ex and you know that was a very stupid move because arturito arturo oh that guy should die man should kill him already the guy is annoying but um you see that denver goes ahead and confronts stockholm and she says she is wrong and you know she gets a little bit shaken up and their relationship is not strengthened by that it's just weakened but let's talk about her for a second also. Let me just find her. Where is she? There we go. So here she is. Um, she's a character that has grown into the series. She was a... She was just a... A, a person with a cameo, let's say. And then she became a main character. And basically what she did... Um, she kind of like went against her own ideal and she went ahead and shot Arturo so that was a cool scene what she did there so for one second there I thought that her character arc was gonna change the way we see her but then right on the next episode she starts having PTSD and, and flashbacks and she's right back to square one and even though she gave Denver the idea that saved his life, she was still, I don't know, she she was, she also saved Helsinki. So she did great things, but she started having like these flashbacks and, and she was kind of like useless by the end. She, you know, it kind of irritated me because, ugh, come on. She's supposed to have this arc where she's strong, you know, but right now where it stands, her man is kind of interested in another woman. She's having these flashbacks. So her, her strong moments were undermined by the weak moments that came right after, immediately after. So her character arc went from this to, to this. So right now she is very vulnerable um you know she's not the strong woman that we we saw jumping down from the ceiling and shooting arturo you know um actually at the very moment she shot him i was like yes but you shot his sides shoot him in the head right um and then the very next scene she was trying to give him uh what you call it um cpr and trying to revive him. So it's kind of like. I'm the woman. That's going to end your life. Oh I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Come on. You know. So uh, I, I thought that in this season. There were many cool things that happened. And then they were undermined immediately. So it's like. I'm cool. Haha. <laughs> no I'm not. You know. So I think. Uh, they, they built this whole scene. And then they took it away. So that's some. Something I did not really enjoy. Because I thought, you know, Stockholm, yes, she's finally embracing that she is one of the gangs. But then she's she, she didn't embrace it. She just showed that it was adrenaline and it wasn't really her personality or, you know, it wasn't it wasn't something that boom came up, you know. 
but I'm not I'm not trying to criticize the series. I'm just saying that it was a very good season, but there were a few things that I could have they could have made it better. Um, Palermo, this man, when he was first introduced, he was this general, this, you know, this guy in this season, he was just, um, yeah, he was just an errands boy. And when he was called that, he didn't like it. But then why put that dialogue in? They called him an errands boy and he didn't like it. But then throughout the season, he didn't do anything about it. He was just following orders. So why put that dialogue in if you're not going to make him act on it? You know what I mean? I mean, they they called him like, oh, you're not in charge anymore. And then he doesn't like it, but then he doesn't do anything about it. And he stays in the same situation. I'm like, so why mention it? You know, just make him the, the, the captain, make him the, you know, the cool guy he is and make him a hero. Which eventually, you know, there were in, in the series, in the season, there were many things happening. Parallel stories. Um, you saw the story of Stockholm trying to overcome her fears and then, you know, getting spiraled into this um, whole um, event that she regrets. You see Palermo also and what he is doing. He's underground. He's taking everyone is taking part in something different, right? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to speed up because I don't want this video to be too long. Um, okay, so we have the the girlfriend here. Is this the girlfriend? Tatiana. Okay, so they look the same. When I first saw the girlfriend, I was like, okay, so Tatiana looks very similar to the um, the the woman here that you can see, the detective, but. I don't know if it's it's going to be um, relevant, you know. So I think this is going to be something. This is, a, of course, a fan theory. Nothing is confirmed. But um, I think I just saw a spoiler here because apparently. Is it the same actress? Well, I don't know. No, it's not the same actress. This is the OK. OK, it's not the same actress act actress. This is just a fan theory. So it's a different actress. Okay. Um, but the when as soon as I saw her, I, I was like, wait, is that the detective? But apparently, maybe, maybe not. We haven't had any confirmation. Um, so th she was the girlfriend. Uh, she was Berlin's girlfriend. Let's talk about her for a second here. She, for a second, um, she was trying to get back into her career and I understand that because they pushed her away and then the biggest mistake that police made were you know was to try to make her um, seem guilty and part of the resistance and then she had a baby um, and then she it, it seemed as if she was gonna change sides but by the end of the season she actually is planning to overtake and when she said her daughter's name is Victoria, Victoria means victory. And I think she felt like she was losing the battle and she wanted victory. So I think that's when a light bulb, you know, turned on. So let's see what's going to happen with her. I think she did a great job. Um, and, at, and not like she was still in power, even though she was in a vulnerable state. She never lost power. She's still a very strong woman, a very strong character. And I think that's what, you know, the other characters should have been written as characters that are strong, but never lose their, their power. Of course, um, the professor, he had a moment where he said, you can kill me. I will never turn my back. And, you know, that showed how powerful he is. He got shot in his foot. He, he had great self-control that shows how powerful he is as well. But um, at the same time, you know, it at the same time, they were trying to maintain his power and control. It, it just showed that 
he was um he wasn't prepared you know and it, that's not a problem because you know he's very resistant he's very strong but at the same time he could have um he could have had a security guard you know i don't know he could have done something to avoid all of this um and then of course we have nairobi who you know was the whole meaning or the whole purpose of season five for nairobi and she appeared i think once one episode and just you know as a cameo so yeah and but she was like the best character I, honestly she was like she controlled everything okay so we talked about almost every one of them then we have um the raquel which is lisbon and she is she's this woman that is taken control she has taken control she has become the the first lady so she's commanding everything she she figured out that they didn't the police didn't know about the professor being captured so she's a very smart person she's in control also and you know but we didn't see a lot of um a lot of things going on with her not a lot but still it, it was nice to seeing uh, to see her in control and it was it was pretty good her character development was okay then we have who else Helsinki Helsinki is that type of character that you guys don't want him to die you know you really don't want him to to suffer and he's like this brute guy and tough so it was nice it was nice seeing um his character be you know portrayed the way, way he did he was and i really enjoyed that as well um and then let's talk about mm, let me see bogota yes the scene where bogota attacked um gandia man this guy is brute strength he's pure strength and i really loved it really really loved how they they made this character so strong and and you know yeah i liked it so he had a fight with gandia which let's talk about gandia for a second this guy has been getting on my nerves since um season three or or four i think season three season four is where we all started to hate him um but he he has this story with tokyo um you know tokyo seduced him to escape and this guy is military grade so he he did a very good job with his character um and you can see that he is a person that does not have self-control he's very egotistic and i really like the way they they um developed his character in this season and i liked the fact that he went back to straight back to battle um and he did he made a few mistakes because he is arrogant and he he did not obey orders so he got some of his um people killed um, the only thing that I would have liked to see, I mean, the way he, he died was okay, but I would really love to have seen him get shot in the forehead. You know, that's, that's what I wanted to see. That's what I was expecting. I was expecting him to be shot in the head, just as he did Nairobi. You know, I wanted to, I, that would have been very symbolic. That would have been, you know the highlight of the whole season you know him getting shot on the head but then again the way he died was um was very interesting because let's talk about tokyo so tokyo is the character the first recruit right well she wasn't the first recruit because we we it, but she was the first to appear in the series she was the first one to narrate the series in season one. But um, now we have learned that she wasn't the first recruit because when, when the professor took her to the apartment, she saw pictures of other people. 
and we also saw Berlin recruiting, or he had his crew already. Um, so the thing about Tokyo is that when, we, like, when they started telling his her story, we found out many things about her. She she had killed people before. She was this character that was um, uncontrollable. We knew that from the start. But the moment I saw them giving her a parallel story with another lover that had died, at that moment, when I saw them saying, oh, uh, my life um, my life changed or my life ended on that day, that moment, I was like, mm, she's going to die. She's going to get killed in this season. First of all, because one, somebody had to die in the season, you know, or else there would be no climax. We know that people are going to die. Even in the next part, they're going to die. Um, so when I saw that they gave her a second story, a, a, a story where she had a lover and she could have never loved again and, and all of that thing, I knew that she was going to die. I absolutely knew because why would you even mention that? So she died so that she could, you know, like meet her her loved one in <laughs> another place, another time or in heaven or in hell or whatever, wherever they go. Um, so when I saw that, I was like, uh oh, Tokyo's going to die. But at least I want her to die a hero. And then um the moment she got shot five times, I'm like, okay, she's not going to survive five shots. Um, but I hope this is not how she dies because I want her to die a hero. She needs to die a memorable death because she is a main character. Um, and then she didn't die from those five shots. And then they gave us hope that she could have survived. But then the moment we saw, um, what's the guy's name? Rio, the moment we saw Rio make a hole this size because he was so late, I was like, uh oh, this is going to be her death. And then she started talking to him and it was this emotional moment. And, you know, she told him that she was thinking of him dancing. But then one of the flashbacks was of her ex, not him, which was interesting. Um, so Rio died not knowing that she actually still loved her ex and that he wasn't the love of her life, but he still thought that. And, you know, it was, it was a nice send off and the grenades. Oh, that was awesome. I think the grenades were a nice touch, but I really wanted her to shoot, um, shoot Gandia in the face before the grenades. And then, you know, my, uh, the way I would do it is um, I would have her shoot him in the face. And then the the colonel would come. I don't know, shoot her down. I don't know. This is what I would have done. I would like the moment that she was hiding, she should have stood up shot Gandhi in the face and then she could have been shot down you know receive all those bullets and then not Gandhi, but the colonel would come up to her and then she would remove the grenades i think that would be the way i would do it because i wanted to see him get shot in the face you know the way he did to nairobi and i think that could have been a more symbolic death for Gandhi. And then Tokyo, um, I loved her wink before she died. It shows how sassy and, you know, how her character was. And I really enjoyed the way they did this. Um, it was it was an awesome send off. I think this season was very action packed. Um, but at the end, I did not expect it to to run for another part, part two. You know, I thought it was going to be the last season. But then again, um, La Casa de Papel, in season one, they also did the same thing for season two. So I thought, okay, so this is the type of series that in season one and season 
there are going to be two seasons for one heist. So season one, season two concluded the first heist. And, and then I thought that season three and season four would be a different heist and it would, it would conclude. And then season five and season six would be a different heist and it would conclude. That didn't happen. Season one, season two was a one heist. Season two, season three, season four was another heist. But then season four was a little bit of a disappointment because it didn't develop as much as I wanted it to. So season five and season so season five would be the conclusion, but they actually made a season six, but they're they're calling it season five, volume one and season five, volume two. Now, this may be because of the, the corona and the pandemic, maybe, maybe not. But then again, I did not expect it to run that long. You know what I mean? Like season five, season six. So they had four seasons for one heist. That is four seasons of us trying to see them get uh, get away from that same location, you know. So four seasons, that's a lot. I remember that in we had two seasons and we were like, come on, when are they going to escape already? Now four seasons, you know. So I can imagine that season five, volume two, there will be many different things and I think um, there will be deaths of the side characters. I think um, Palermo is going to die. I think um, maybe Stockholmo, Stockholm is going to die. Um, I think maybe who else is going to die? We saw Moscow as well. Moscow was in a, in a flashback. Um, so I think... Palermo is going to die. Maybe he's going to die saving Helsinki. Um, I think Stockholm is going to die. Or if she doesn't die, she... Something's going to happen. But I think they're going to they're gonna make Denver go with the other girl. Which is... What is her name? Maria. No, this is not... This is the season one. Where is she? I don't know. I think this guy is going to die. Matias. He was shot down the stairs as well. So all of these are side characters. Marsala. I think I think Marcella is going to die on in the hands of um, the detective. I don't know. I have a feeling that there are going to be a lot of deaths. You know. I think this guy is going to be um, imprisoned and this guy is going to turn into a justice maker. I think he's going to leak some information that will imprison this guy. You know, these are all my theories. Okay. Um, and I think this guy is also going to help imprison Luis. And then he will be promoted. I think Angel will be promoted um, in the police department. And I think that's all for now. I think that's all. Let me see if I can think of anything else, if I can remember anything else, any detail that I might have seen. But I was sure Tokyo was going to die as soon as I saw a parallel story for her. And I was like, okay, so they're going to kill her because she has no will to live anymore. And she wants to be free. And, you know, there's going to be something interesting. And it was, it was very interesting. So basically, this whole season was very intense. I really liked it. There were a few um, breakdowns where they talked about drama but it was more of it wasn't a tactical season like season one and two season one and two things happened and they were premeditated we were like oh this happened what are they gonna do now but then it was premeditated they had a way out for everything in season five they didn't have a way out they didn't know what was gonna happen they had to improvise and many things happened and i think it there were many stupid things that happened i mean for example um 
they let the hostages take the guns who leaves guns lying around honestly you're in a heist you're in a war you leave the guns lying around where when you turn your backs around so that was very stupid you know so stupid things happened and these guys were supposed to be these masterminds they weren't they let it happen um i forgot about arturo this guy had a character arc which is amazing this guy was the coward who became a, a cold-blooded killer he was thirsty for blood he wanted to be the hero so badly that he forgot his ethics he forgot his morals and he started shooting at you know everybody he even got two hostages hurt. So the, the, his character arc was nice because he went from coward to deadly, you know. And I really liked the way they, they treated this character because we love hating someone. And this guy, man, I hate him. <laughs> I hate him with all my guts. Um and that's a good thing because the the writers want us to hate him they want us to root against him and that's what makes a good anti-hero so he's kind of like the villain and so him and gandia were these two characters that we they were designed to make us hate them and want them you know to suffer I think um, in season five, volume two, he's going to come back in some way. I don't think he's going to die um, in a hospital bed, but I think he he's going to try to go back in or he's going to go on to the media. There's something's going to happen, but they're not going to they're go they're not going to lose um, the opportunity or miss the opportunity to put him back into the series. Um, he is going to come back in some way or another. I'm pretty sure of it because this actor, the same thing as this actor, they are too precious not to be in, in the next one. Um, we're going to see a, I'm, I'm pretty sure that in season five, part two, the whole storyline that they're telling in this one will come back in season five, part two as a, uh, as a plot twist so i'm pretty sure it's going to come as a plot twist i don't know if he's going to come back to life you know maybe he faked his death that is a possibility but it's far off but um i think there has there there will be something to do with his son being an engineer or else why would they even put that storyline you know um and then there's the fan theory that his girlfriend was this one and maybe her baby is berlin because she said that her 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 daughter has a father that is deceased so maybe you know that's the fan theory all in all this is my quick 40 minute review of la casa de papel season five and i enjoyed i enjoyed it but i think that there were a few things that come on you could have easily solved you know but i really liked it i thought it was awesome and you know the the action sequences were very good um the way it was written it was very good um i think i've said all of all i wanted to say uh did you guys watch it of course because if you if you watched my 40 minute video without having watched season five I gave you a lot of spoilers, <laughs> but I think it was pretty good. I think the the production was really nice. Um, and you know what I missed? I missed hearing the da 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 da. Oh, bella ciao, bella ciao, bella ciao, ciao, ciao. Da da da. I think that is one of the most iconic things about La Casa di Papel, and I think they neglected using that song in a certain moment um but guys i thought the the action sequences were awesome especially when arturito started the war you know i liked the way that they used um common objects as shields like the, the stove top um there of course there were a few lies like for example when, when gandia threw the the grenade 
he threw it in, wow like wow very good aim and then tokyo grabbed it and threw it back very good aim everybody went through the hole so everything was so um it, that part was was not too realistic but hey it could happen it's not too fake either but i liked it i really enjoyed it i thought i thought the action sequences were very well made and they have a lot of firepower and yeah i think there were many things going on that were nice the dialogues were cool as well and i think it was great writing great photography you know the the dp was amazing cinematographer was also on point i think everything was so cool as as it is you know la casa de papel but i think they introduced a few storylines just to justify the means you know the ends um so i think they just for example they made us believe that tokyo was a killer so she had no way back she was already a killer she they made us think tokyo was still in love with someone who died so she would resent every other love like she did with rio but then again we we needed a a scene between rio and and tokyo so kind of like the what they build their relationship their love what they build in season three season one season two they they ruined it in season three when she left them and then in season five, they completely destroyed their relationship, their love, when she was remembering someone that she truly loved and never loved again in the same way. So whatever they built in season one and season two between them two, it was crushed in season three, the beginning, when she left, and season five, when um, she started thinking about her ex. So I think that was not necessary i think she could have died a, a hero without us needing some you know some preparation because in movies or series whenever you want to kill a main character a very strong main character you start spoiling him a little bit so that people will will feel less attached to him when he dies that's what writers do that's what we normally do when when you see someone being treated like for example um game of thrones daenerys everybody loved daenerys she was annoying a little bit yes but everybody liked the idea of daenerys and then in the last season they started making her you know ha take some actions that were not necessarily likely of her as soon as i saw that i'm like uh -uh, she's gonna die i know she's gonna die i know also the same thing with Jamie. Jamie not Lannister. His arc was amazing. He was the good guy. But the moment he said to Brianna, I cannot be with you. And he he played her, you know, he did her wrong. When I saw that happening, I'm like, oh, he's gonna die. Because that's what writers do. That's what we do. We are programmed to, oh, I don't want to hurt your feelings, so we're gonna do something that you're not gonna like him anymore and um then we're gonna kill him so that you're gonna be like ah he was asking for it or ah we saw it coming you know kind of something like that um the same thing with the the main character in the beginning what was his name he got beheaded um oh i forgot it's been so long how did we know he was gonna die first of all he he was too involved with um the you know the story and instead of he was like trying to warn everybody instead of running away he was a target from the beginning and then um of course it was a surprise to see him get beheaded because we were not expecting it but we were prepared for it so I'm talking too much about Game of Thrones. This is not a Game of Thrones um, <laughs> review. But what I'm trying to explain is that whenever you see somebody prepare, then you know they're going to die. Whenever they do shifts that are not necessarily um, supposed to be that way, you know they're going to die. Like, for example, um, in La Casa de Papel, Berlin was this evil, 
not evil, but you know, he was this guy that was despicable, but then he started becoming a good guy. And the moment you see that he shifted his personality and he started using heroic speeches, you you know, he's gonna, he's gonna justify, um, with it, with a heroic death. And I think that's the, the pivot point of, um, a character. Whenever you see a, char a shift in character, they're probably going to die or there's going to be a plot twist. Because nobody kills someone we love. Like, for example, if in this scene, if it's in, if in this season they killed the professor, nobody would want to watch the next one. Because, come on. I mean, the professor did everything. He planned. He was the smart guy. And then there was a scene where um, the detective was pointing the gun at him while he was hanging and then there was this suspense is she gonna shoot him is he gonna die now and then she just says i wish i knew she was not gonna shoot him because how can you prepare this character so well and then make him die this embarrassing death you know so whenever somebody whenever a character is going to be killed off you're normally normally prepared you're normally prepared for it. Um, like, for example, Spider-Man with Andrew Garfield. I think it was Spider-Man 2 with Andrew Garfield. From the beginning of the movie, there was this suspense where her father... Um, what was her name? Um, her father, the, the, the character's father, was saying, um, stay away from her, protect her, something like that. From the very beginning, when we saw flashbacks, I was like, oh, she's going to die. She's going to die. Because, you know, they gave us signs from the very beginning. And this is called preparation. They prepare you for what's coming. Very subtle moments. Very subtle techniques. Also in Game of Thrones. <laughs> I love Game of Thrones. The Red Wedding. When we saw... When I saw the... Um, the background music changing and she was looking around you know that everyone's going to die you you know it and then she the the moment we realized she was going to die was when she looked at the armor that was a clear indication everyone's going to die here she they were bet betrayed you know and also what happened before that before they died, what happened with Rob, this this great king? What happened with him? He started being spoiled. He started he started making wrong decisions. So we loved his his um, you know we loved him as a as a king, but then he wanted to marry someone else. He went back on his word. He did things that annoyed us. Because we were like, come on, man. You're supposed to be this cool king. What are you doing, man? Come on. Be responsible. Even his mother argued with him. And he was rude to her. So before his death, we were prepared. We saw a character shift. We saw this strong, powerful, intelligent king make stupid decisions. Which led to his death. So we accepted it because, you know... In any case, um, all I wanted to say is that I really liked La Casa de Papel, or Money Heist, as you guys know it. I really loved the, se the season, and I think they did everything right, except for a few things that could have been more emotional, more impactful. And did you guys watch it? Let me know in the comments. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree? Um, was there something that you think would have been different? Um, was there something you wanted to see more of, you know, let me know, let me know. Okay. And also, um, there's the last thing that I just came to mind. They introduced this captain that he was only relevant in the last episode, you know, and it was so cool how they introduced him. He was sitting down in a, on a toilet and we're like, oh, this guy is going to bring menace. But then he was only relevant in the last episode and... Yeah, and he was also undermined by um, Gandia, the captain. But then at the end, um, he he put Gandia in his place. 
But still, I wanted somebody to shoot Gandhi in the face. I mean, that's all I wanted. <laughs> you know, but we're not going to see that because he was blown up with um, Tokyo. Okay, guys, that's all for me today. I hope you enjoyed my review. I hope that I said something that was um, that was how what's the word I'm looking for? Not logical, but reasonable. Um, I hope I said something that made sense in terms of the storyline. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed my review. If you guys want me to do more reviews like this um, after I watch a movie, I think it's uh, much easier if I sit down and talk about a movie I watched than to actually sit and react to it. I think um, it brings a lot more insight. And as you can see, I really like talking about movies. And when I do a review, I really talk about the techniques. I really talk about references. I really talk about different things that happened. It's very different from a reaction. And I want to take this opportunity right now because some, some people are like, hey, um, you react about something. And so reactions are different from reviews. Okay, reactions is like me watching it and enjoying it. A review is kind of like a breakdown and I can use my background in um, production and and because um, you guys know that I worked in a TV station. I've produced... Um, Look, when I say I've produced, I mean I was one of the producers. We had more than, I don't know, 50 producers, okay? I'm not talking, I'm not saying I was the executive producer. I'm just saying I worked as a producer. And what a producer does is we chase funds, we chase things that, um, for example, I need a, I need a, a, a van for this part. Uh, I need a, a production company, um, not a production company, a editing company. You know, we, we, we make the project happen. So, for example, I need a scene that is um, going to be outdoors with um, rain. So what I, as a producer, need to do is I need to find a location. I need to get the rights to film in that location. I need to make um i need to make sure that police are informed i need to make everything happen so that we can go to that location on that set day set time we need to make sure that all the actors are on time we need to make sure the actors have food we need to make sure that um everyone has you know knows what they do they're doing they have their script we need to know make sure that all of the staff is there we need to make sure that, um, for example, if, if we need rain, we need to make sure that everything is working. We need to look for someone who does that type of effect. We need to hire this. So a producer does that kind of job. We go after things. So, for example, I worked more as a TV producer. So what I used to do was I used to ensure that the, the staff was doing what they had to do. So... For example, we're going to go to, uh, we, we want to film about a museum. So what a producer would do is they would call the museum. They would um, arrange a time and place. They would find the person to write the script. We would make sure that the script was, was on point. We would find a cameraman, uh, a lighting man. <laughs> what do you call those? you know, a person for the lights and the person for the microphone. So there would be three people. And then we would contact the reporter. So this is for TV. So we had someone to do the lights, some to, someone to do the microphone, someone to do the camera and a reporter. And then I would be there, the fifth person in the crew, to make sure that everything was going according to plan. If something was wrong, I would solve the issues. You guys can go ahead and see my, la my oldest video here on the channel and you can see that. So, um, so I have experience with that. And also, of course, I, I, I studied about cinema and I love cinema. So when I do a review, I can use my background knowledge to talk about that. But when I do a reaction, I just want to have fun. I just want to enjoy. I, I just want to, you know, just see it. So you can see a difference between a reaction and a review. A review is more detailed. It's more technical. 
it's more informative and it's more of a breakdown. And I spent one hour almost here talking about this. A reaction is, oh, that's so nice. I like this. I don't like that. You know, a, a reaction is how I react to what's shown to me as a friend. So don't get mixed up with a, a reaction and a review. A reaction is one thing, spontaneous reaction. A review is another thing. And I hate when people that, you know, my friends that worked with me, we're going out to the cinema, right? We're going out to watch a movie. Instead of them enjoying the movie, they would be like, oh, but this could have been that. Oh, I can see that this um, CGI is fake. Oh, I would have done. Uh, that is so annoying, you know, because you need to separate um, what is work and what is entertainment. So my reactions are for fun. OK, even if I if I find like a, a CGI not too real. If I'm like, oh, like, for example, I'll, I'll give you an example. Bahubali 2, they were thrown over the wall. I thought that was so entertaining. I have my critiques. I know that anti-gravity is, is, is out of this world, but it's a movie. It's fiction, you know. So come on, it's fun. We, you know, the producers, they, they, they thought this would be fun. You know, the director thought this would be nice. So basically, um, I, I think that watching a movie is different from criticizing a movie, which is different from giving your opinion, giving your feedback. Everything is different. So when I do a reaction, I try to enjoy it to the fullest. But when I give a review, I try to show what I would have done differently and, you know, I don't I don't go too deep into technicalities, but I also go I, I like to go deep into storyline and plots that could have been implemented to make it just a little bit better. Um, and I hope you guys understand that. And if anyone asks for future references, a reaction is different from a review. Get that in your head. And next time that you see my reaction, you know that it's not supposed to be full of technical criticism or critique it's just me as a guy enjoying the movies that you love okay that's it <laughs> but if you guys want me to do a review um i could watch a movie and review it rather than actually reacting to it full full movie reaction that takes a lot of time that gets my my account blocked many times and I think maybe, let me know in the comments, what do you prefer? If I do a review like this one, full detail of what I actually think, or a reaction first time spontaneous, the way I'm, I have been doing it, okay? Um, so yeah, I didn't want to, like for, for the series, I didn't want to put videos on. I just wanted to watch, enjoy La Casa de Papel. And then I thought, man, I have so much to say about this. So I'm going to turn on the camera and I'm going to talk about it. Um, so, yeah. And also, I'm going to I'm going to look, uh, I'm going to watch the behind the scenes. You guys have no idea how much work and how many people are involved to make a series or to make a movie. So when I say I'm a producer, um, I'm not saying I'm an executive producer. I'm just saying I'm the guy who has his name scroll up in the credits two minutes after the credits has started you know i'm that type of guy i'm not a famous producer uh, but uh, i have worked as a producer and i'm very proud of it so you know nobody like yeah. and i worked for the second biggest tv station in my country that is that is an achievement that i am proud of so whenever somebody says oh what type of producer are you hey i'm the one that you know worked with what I liked until I until I got I got tired of it that's the, the reality I got tired of bringing great projects to the table because I wanted to be more than a producer and and you know people with with power they did not allow me to grow because of jealousy so I did what anybody would have done I left 
and I, I, I just created my own path. I opened my own production company and I started making my own videos. But then as, as time went by, I decided, you know what? I want to be a businessman. I love producing, but I want to be a businessman. And the thing that gave me the most money in my country was teaching English. And I had experience with teaching, so I started teaching English, you know, to, to my people. And I made so much more money that way. But I continued doing what I love as a hobby. So, you know, I, I stepped away from a big dream and I changed, um, I replaced it with another big dream and I became a successful businessman. And then I left my country. I came to London, UK, and here my life is so calm and I have more time to do these type of things, you know, movies, well, not movies, watch movies, react to movies, make music, make videos. And I think I'm, I'm kind of almost living the dream. I'm almost there. Um, I don't need to work for big companies, you know, because it, it's a toxic environment sometimes. I mean, I had a project, my script, my script. There was a person who would invest 3.5 million. They, they were going to invest 3.5 million on my script, a movie that I wrote. And my manager said, uh, I don't, I don't think so. I'm going off topic here, <laughs> but I was so angry because the person I had found a sponsor, I had found a sponsor. I just needed an okay because we were going to film, we were going to do everything. And my manager was not going to need to do anything. He was just going to watch the final product and put it on the TV station because everything was already paid for. 3.5 million budget. Um, but things happened and I can't, you know, look back in the past. So I'm really grateful for where I am today. Um, and yeah, that's a little bit more about my story. Um, some of you suggested a Q&A. I probably will do a Q&A. But guys, if you guys have a dream... Um, and if, if you can't find, like, for example, my dream was to be in, in this TV station. I worked hard. I got in and I saw that it wasn't really what I wanted. So I left. It takes, it takes really real courage for you to leave, um, something you fought for, for so long. And I did it, but it was the right move. I thought it was the right decision that I made. And right now I have more views on my YouTube channels than, um, than many of their, their programs. Of course, not per month. <laughs> that would be impossible because the TV station is, is huge. But for example, um, for one program, I think their, their audience is like, let's say 1 million people watching that program on my YouTube channel. I have combined. 3.5 million monthly. So take that. The program that I used to work in has less views than I do. And my channel has, you know, more, it, it's, it's, it's growing more and more. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy with that. Uh, at least I can say, Hey, and, and they called me back, but I didn't go. I have a different life now. So, you know, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed my story. This is this was a long podcast and I hope you enjoyed my review to La Casa de Papel, Money Heist, and I hope you guys um, interact with me more. I mean, this video is one hour and five minutes. I don't want to see comments saying, hey, react to this, react to that. I, I want you guys to talk to me. OK, so talk to me about what I said. OK, don't just ask me for stuff. Just talk to me, give me your feedback and I will really appreciate it. I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care now.
Don't forget to like and subscribe. Don't forget to join our Discord. You guys know I'm really honest and open here. And I, I treat you guys like you are friends and family. So talk to me. Don't just ask me for reactions, okay? That's it. I'm a genuine reactor. So I want you to be a genuine viewer as well. Okay, so because I, I, I see many people come onto my video, they don't even watch one minute and they already comment asking for for more and more and more. And I want this to be a fun experience for me and for you. So just go ahead and give me some feedback. I really want to know your opinion about season five of Money Heist. Did you like it? Did you agree with anything I said? Did you disagree? What did you disagree on? And I think this way we will be able to have a more open uh, relationship as a creator and viewer. Okay. And I also opened up a little bit about my story and um, yeah, I'm not talking bad about my ex job. Okay. <laughs> I'm not talking bad about them at all. I'm just saying that I was young also. I was, I was young. So I know it, it was a big responsibility for me to carry a film by myself, a 3.5 million um, um, Brazilian reais film, which is a big budget, but still, it could have worked out, but it didn't, and I'm in a better place now, <laughs> and I'm happier now, so many things happened because of that, many good things, it was a blessing in disguise, but in any case, I'll see you guys, take care now. Peace out. Bye-bye.